What's going on guys? Jax the Bearded Hiker here. So you can forget about ever buying deli roast beef at your local grocery store ever again after you do today's video. Today we're going to be doing my version of deli style roast beef slow roasted on the Kudu Grill. Let's get busy. All right, so let's get this party started. We're gonna start out with about two and a half pounds of eye of the round. And you, as you can see, I've uh, aggressively trimmed it pretty well on all sides, except for this little bit right here, which I'm pretty sure this will render off during this cook here. So we're going to season this up, starting with a little grapeseed oil. And we're just using this as a binder. looks pretty good all right so what we're going to be seasoning up with here is some of this stuff here this is uncle steve's shake this is the thick meat and we're gonna be pretty aggressive with that i'm almost out this is my last little bit here but i've got more and i'll leave a link below where you can get some of this uncle steve's shake if you're interested in this is probably some of my favorite uh rub for as far as beef is concerned the thick meat uh all of his rubs are pretty good though well, look, we're out so but more where that came from a big thing that he's put my label on it not that you would want my label or maybe you would I don't know but if you did want one of these big containers I don't know reach out to him and ask him hey can I have one with Jax's label on it all right that looks pretty good there one of the other things here I'm gonna add is some of this bourbon smoked pepper um, just a little bit of a, maybe a teaspoon. I'm just going to, it's pretty coarse ground. So just going to put that on there. It's just going to add a little bit of extra flavor on here. Hell, losing half of it. All right, so now what we're going to do is skewer this joker. We'll find our center. Just go all the way through like that. Okay, now that we got this skewered up, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera, so this is a little difficult to do in this direction. All right. All right, so I'm going to tell you what I got going on here real quick. Let's go ahead and get this started. And uh, here, I'm going to change uh, angles and, and show you what I got here. All right, so what we got here is I got a bunch, a big bunch of coals that are banked all the way over to this side. And over here, I have some just kind of drug some of those coals that are hot and pulled out here so this is going to be my i guess what this is going to be our high heat this will be our low heat and we can also move this up and down to get it off the fire and right here what i got is some acacia wood so we're just going to kind of get this a little smoke as we go and you see the height that i got it's a pretty good height and a good way to judge is around uh, 250 225 is to be able to put your hand up here and hold it there 10 seconds and if you can hold it there 10 seconds and then have to move it, then you can figure that that's probably about anywhere from 225 to 250 degrees. So we're just going to let this go. Now, as you can see, we did ag aggressively trim this piece of meat. So what we're going to need to do to offset that, because there's not a lot of fat that's going to be basting this, is I'm going to be giving it a spritz every now and again just so it doesn't dry out and what i use is got it in this pump right here it's a 50 50 blend of beef broth and red wine so every now and then we're just going to spritz it keep it moist and we're going to slowly bring this up to temp so what we're going to be doing today to measure our internal temp here is we're going to be using the meter plus i've been using this for about a month now on several cooks kind of getting to know it it's i love this thing and it's perfect for the rotisserie because it's wireless and as that is spinning we don't have to worry about any wires or anything uh, getting tangled in our rotisserie so gonna be perfect and basically how this joker works here and i'm gonna have to be real still so the camera doesn't go out of focus uh, but the way this works is you insert the probe it's kind of thick but this is going to measure your ambient temperature on the outside there's a little line here uh, you probably can't see it Anyway, there's a line right here, and you got to make sure when you insert this, you want to go all the way in past that line, 
when you insert it because then that's going to make sure that you get a proper temp. I'm actually going to be doing probably a review video on this later. So let's go ahead and insert this and uh, I'll tell you more about this little badger here. I'm going to leave a link in the description where you guys can pick up one of these as well. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I didn't put this in here before because we had to put the rod in, so it's going to be kind of tricky, but we're going to not go, we're going to go just almost next to the rod, and this thing is long enough, as you can see, my line's right here, so we should be getting relatively the center there. So let's go ahead and insert this right in there. Ah, there we go. All right, so one of the things that you have to realize about the Meter Plus this is your charging base right here and once you pull it out the meter meter plus turns on the batteries are back here these have magnets on there um, again i'm not going to go into too much detail today on this but i'll show you how we set up a cook here um, this is the app that you download it's a free app you uh, just go you turn it on it'll you'll go to this page and as you can see here right now it's saying the internal temp of the meat is 46 degrees um, we're going to set a target temp in a minute our ambient temp where we're at is right now is registering 111, 112 degrees it looks like. So what you do is you hit the setup cook here and you'll get these options here. You hit on, we're going to be doing beef and it'll tell you, you got these roast uh, ribeyes and you got all these choices. I'm going to call this a roast. So we'll hit that roast and let's scroll down here and here's round and it's saying 125 that is for obviously rare and we're gonna go right here to medium rare that's what we're looking for we're gonna probably all right we're gonna i'm not gonna pull it i'm gonna set it to pull it at 133 and so you just you can go backwards or forwards there so 133 we're gonna start the cook and it as you can see here it gives us an estimating cooking an estimated cooking time and this will actually notify you about five minutes before it's telling you to take it off it'll also uh it's so the target is 133 it's going to tell us to remove it maybe a few minutes before it hits 133 but again you will be notified so make sure your alerts are on so here's a good tip for you kudu owners out there while you're uh, rotisserie and if you'll take your palancha pan and just put it directly over the top that will help reflect some of that heat down over whatever it is you're rotisserie in All right, guys, I know it's kind of smoky, and I'm going to tell you why. It, we're about three and a half hours in, and I, so to the right of the screen here, you'll see that we have our leftover acacia wood. And I just was like, oh, you know what, let's throw some pecans on there. So those are pecans that I had, and they are smoking like crazy. So we're at 115 degrees internal temp. Um, the meter is not reading the ambient temp. And apparently regard, uh, with the ambient temp, the uh, meter, if it's too low of an ambient temp, it doesn't register. So again, I don't know much about this, but my thought is, or it, my theory is, it's spinning. And you see to the right there of your screen that that's where it is. So it's spinning and it's just, it, seeing how the kudu is like an open type dealio, it's just not able to read that ambient temp very good. So we've been spritzing it, like my helper spritzing it right now. We've been doing that, I don't know, every 15, 20 minutes. But she's looking good. All right, we just, the. Meter Plus just gave us the alarm and it wants us to pull it, so we're gonna rest. Uh, it says 20 minutes, but I think now we're at 18, so it's been two minutes. So we're gonna pull this. Look at that, that it looks delicious. Let's get a close up. You see it? All right, there it is. Looks good, and y'all see how shiny it is? Hang on a second, I'm gonna tell you this real quick. I did kind of find out something on this cook and you know I might get crucified by the barbecue or uh, community or whatever but 
no, you know, we were spritzing that thing every 10, 15 minutes because it was drying out and whatnot. But then I we got to thinking, hey, you know what? We have that some leftover uh, grease from a Wagyu brisket. So I'm just going to show you. Wagyu brisket. So what I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Let's try that. So I just kind of put it in the palancha pan like this and kind of heated it up just a little bit just like it is right now and I basted that with the grease not the liquid but the actual grease that was on top and listen for the last hour I have not spritzed it not one time so note to self from now on instead of spritzing my meat if I have any leftover grass that's what I'm gonna use alright guys so we just took that off and one of the things so normally you know, we do these cooks and then we slice into it and show you what it looks like and all that. But we're making this like deli meat. So what we're doing is we're, I took it inside, I put it in my microwave and I'm letting that whole thing, I haven't cut into it or anything. We're gonna let it rest for 20 minutes or like, like the meter plus said. So, you know, we don't have 20 minutes now obviously, but we probably got like 16 minutes, but anyway, right after we hit that 16 minute mark i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna put it directly in my refrigerator so it'll like cool down quickly and then tomorrow morning i'm going to slice it up into you know like deli slice like for sandwiches and whatnot so that's going to be the next thing you see um that's why you're not going to see me direct you know cutting into it right now all right let's build us up a sandwich all right we're going to start out with but I like roast beef anyway. Not everybody does, but we'll start out with some uh, horseradish sauce here. Next key ingredient is Coleman's mustard there. Just a little bit. Kind of, we want it to get a note. We know, get that nose feel off of it. Get that nose feel off of it? I don't know what that means. You know, when it catches you in the nose. You know what I'm talking about? Alright, let's use my meat turner here and get us some roast beef slices on there. Using my meat turner, Carolina Chris made this for me. Now let's go with one more piece on there. Alright, next up, go. We gotta have cheddar cheese with a roast beef sandwich. It goes together like polyester on a pimp couple of onions on there, a tomato, then you always gotta salt and pepper that tomato, get us a couple of pickles on there, nice, Whoop. get in there, alright let's give this a taste, mmm, That right there is better than any deli roast beef or any deli meat that you're going to get in a grocery store for that matter. And I mean, look at this. I mean, it's even better than boar's head. Boar's head is probably my, if I'm going to get deli meat, that's what I get. But this is 10 times better than that. And I mean, I mean, pound for pound, dollar for dollar. Look at this mound of meat right here. I, don't, I can't remember. Was it two and a half? Three and a half pounds. I don't know. I said that in the beginning of the video, but I mean, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, you're not going to get any better deal from that. And I'll tell you, man, it's cooked perfectly for my taste. That meter plus that we used worked out perfect for this because I didn't have to go over there and keep checking it. So meter plus for the win. All right, guys, deli style roast beef on your Kudu Grills rotisserie. Do it.